Good. Alright, I'm gonna mute myself and Kyle is all, all you. All right, we'll take some questions for Coach Trailer. Greg, you're up. Jeff, how are you doing today? Good, Greg. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We're gonna we're gonna talk to Jalen Haynes here in a bit. I'm wondering what made him a player who was a fit for a, a two one zero jersey. Um, I can barely hear Greg right now. I think it's about Jalen Haynes wearing number yeah. one. What made him a fit for one of those two one zero jerseys? Uh, he's everything that it epitomizes. I mean, he's a physically tough kid. He's mentally tough. Uh, he's never on a list. Uh, he's what the brand's all about, and uh, we want that two one zero to be uh, the most important three numbers because it represents obviously the city of San Antonio, our area code, and what the triangle of toughness is about. And, Mental toughness, physical toughness, and representing the brand. So Jalen, big country, is he's he's a. I think he had over 100 votes as well. So very well respected by his teammates. Is it relevant that he's the only senior in that group? What does he mean from a leadership perspective? Um, yeah, that's for sure. He's one of our older guys. He's had some success. He has confidence. He plays hard. So uh, you can't have enough of those kind of guys. And uh, I'm, I hope he loves number one because since the NCAA he gave him another year of eligibility, I'd love to have him back next year. And, and we talked about Rashad yesterday, but he's also kind of positioned as a leader with this group, and, and he's only a sophomore. What is that dynamic like of a young player also being kind of one of the team leaders? I was shocked at that, honestly. When I got here, I just felt like he's from Converse, Judson, and – he was such a, a local hero. I just felt like it must have been just like the buzz. Uh, but then when I got to know him and his family and Bryce, I could see what the fuss was all about. He, he was the leading vote getter. Rashad Wisdom had the most votes of all of them. And, uh, it's very rare you see a, a young man that young in age uh, be that old in soul. Rashad Wisdom's an old soul. Is it just sort of how he guides his teammates, or does he do it more by example? You know, where does that leadership show itself in, in a practice setting? Well, he's both now. Uh, he doesn't just talk a ton, but he, he talks enough. And it, obviously his actions are impeccable, but his words are right on point too. When he speaks, they listen. Okay, JJ, you're up. Hey, Coach, I was wondering, I guess, what your schedule looks like. Is this like an idle week, kind of bye week type of schedule you're, you're working through this week? We're, we're literally going through the Texas State week exactly like we're going to do it next week. Um, everything from Friday night, Saturday, 2.30 kick, uh, we're going to do it all. Uh, so we want our kids to start getting comfortable with routine, we have an entire new coaching staff. We just completed our 16th practice of the season. So, you know, we, we just finished spring ball and we just got one more practice. So, you know, there's a lot of things we have to work through as a staff, uh, where we're going to stretch Saturday, uh, where we're going to sit on the bench, sideline, core, all that kind of stuff. Things you got to work through this week. We'll, we'll have a real mock game Saturday and a mock Friday night, the whole week's been a mock week, honestly. What about what about Texas State? Have you got to look in – obviously they haven't played yet, but have you got into looking at what they do? And can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what you're hoping to see from – they play this Saturday. What do you think you'll see out of them this Saturday? Yeah, we'll know more Saturday. I have a lot of respect for Jake Spavital. He coached my son at A&M. So Jordan was actually been in the room with Jake uh, for at least two years, maybe even three. I'm not for sure how long they were together. Uh, but I know that Jordan's coaching style is more a reflection of Jake's coaching style than mine. So that probably shows you how much Jordan thinks of Jake uh, compared to his father. Okay, Greg, back to you. Jeff Sticks is the other guy we're going to be talking to today. Uh, he's going to be wearing number two for you guys, of course. How did he show you that toughness and representing the brand the way you guys are looking for? 
Well, you know, we, uh, we have a tracking system on all these kids now that lets us know how far they run, how fast they run, how long they're on their feet. And uh, I would say of our 16 workouts, Sticks has been in the top three, if not the top one, every single time. Uh, nobody outworks Sticks. Uh, he, he only has one gear, it's full speed. And uh, he's in and out one of our top three, every single practice of how hard he works. So uh, he also does a fantastic job just in the locker room with the guys. And uh, I remember when the George Floyd incident came out, he was one of the key pieces that really did a great job of holding our team together during that time. When we got to see some practices last year, you know, circumstances were a lot different, but he was very kind of like loud, boisterous, fun-loving kind of guy out there on the field. Have you seen those elements of him, and what does that do for a team dynamic? He's toned it down some, uh, but he's still, that's his personality. Uh, he, he's just done a better job of speaking uh, when needed to and, and, and holding back a little bit, maybe. Uh, he, he's just a wise behind his, beyond his years as well. Um, you know, a lot, he comes from good, good parents, good people. And uh, he's in a unique situation. You know, his father is a policeman. Uh, but he's also a young black male athlete. So he has a unique perspective in our locker room uh, about his father's perspective, his perspective as well. He's, he's, he's really neat to talk to and listen to. And I enjoy my conversations with Sticks. And you were just mentioning that you guys are really through 16 practices here, but obviously in a different world, you'd be getting ready to play this weekend. You know, Could you have had the guys ready to go for Saturday or is the extra week kind of an advantage? How do you look at it now that you have some, some you're right in the moment? And it was funny the other day, somebody asked Frank Harris the exact question about, you know, did they feel like I was making them practice? And Frank's like, no, we, we need every single minute we can get. Uh, so any second we can get, Greg, any extra minute, is going to be a value to us just because we're so far behind the eight ball. It just takes a lot of work to be really good at football. Uh, you could take 11 players out there right now and start on the two-yard line and go on air and say it's a 12-play drive. And I promise you, on air, you would have trouble executing all 12 plays in a row. Now then put 11 more people over there that are coached well, that play hard, and you can imagine the difficulty and the reps it takes to get really good at this game. All right, JJ, back to you. Jeff, I saw on Twitter yesterday that some of the donors to the program were able to raise $100,000 in donations recently. What, what's your reaction to that, and what does that mean to you and the players? I don't want to start mentioning names because I'd be it'd be too long to be here of guys that there's just certain people in this community that it means a lot to. Uh, a lot of those money that were given were even students that gave ten dollars and twenty dollars and five dollars. It wasn't just guys. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be. Um, I don't want to say this without getting in trouble. Old people <laughs> they give the money uh, to help. Twenty dollars. $10, $5, it all matters. There, uh, There's a lot of stuff we need. Uh, I don't want to get on here and start talking about all the things we need, but you can imagine with this year and all the budget cuts, uh, what it took for these kids. You know, uh, we're, we're, we're not staying in a hotel Friday night. You know, we're going to be in our apartments, in our dorms. And uh, there's some things these kids have cut uh, to play football. Uh, that's truly amazing what these young men have done uh, to get tested, you know, one time a week this whole time, now three times a week. Now there's antibody tests, there's EKGs. And, uh, what these kids have done, they're, they're truly a testimony to everybody. Uh, it reminds me of, you know, Shawshank Redemption, uh, that quote in there where you either get busy living or We'll get busy dying. Our, our kids, have, they've been living. And uh, they have really been a great example for all of us uh, of 
how to keep living at a time that's, that's very hard. You almost, they feel almost second guessed and judged for trying to live. And uh, I commend them tremendously. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, anything else for coach? All right, appreciate it. <clears throat> Get the players in there soon. Thanks, Jeff. Thank y'all. Test, test, test.
I'm running out of song. <clears throat> How's it going? All right. Give me a second. I'm going to adjust the camera. <laughs> One, so it's kind of real quick. Two, three, four, All right. five, so. six. Keith, are we good? All right, uh, we're, we're ready to go here with uh, Sheldon Jones. Uh, JJ, you're up first. Different. It it's it really is an honor to wear because you have to earn the respect of your team. You your body of work is going to speak for itself, and just to know that those guys voted me in, not being a San Antonio kid, not being a Texas kid, and they you know they they felt like I was one of the guys they would like to follow and seeing that number, and I truly appreciate that. It's really it's really humbling actually. How how much have you grown as a as a player from this time last year? Oh man, this I feel like everyone is way more mentally tougher because just with everything we're going having to deal with, starting off with that hiatus we went through, not having a spring ball, you know, not really getting into spring weights or anything like that. Honestly, I feel like we're much, much more mentally tougher. What about yourself specifically? Have you do you feel like you've matured? You you seem like you're another year older and maybe have that, that, that year under your belt has helped you become a, a more of a leader on this team? Yeah. So definitely experience, you know, now last year I was a sophomore and I felt I was a leader on the team, but when you're a junior or senior, you don't even have to be a leader for everyone to look for you for answers, for help with things, you know, you're just thrown into that position. And I definitely feel I've grown much more. I'm able to communicate with the full group, helping everybody out, you know, freshmen, if they need somewhere to go, they texting me and things like that. So I feel like I've grown a lot. All right, Greg, you're up. Dix, how you doing? How's, what's up? Are you still that like loud, boisterous, fun guy out there on the field, or have you toned that down a little bit in this kind of? Um, uh, that's not going to change. Uh, one of our five things is passion, and that's some coach wants us to play with. He likes passion. I'm not going to say he wants bad emotion, but he likes to see us playing with passion, and that's one thing I love to do, and uh, that won't change. You mentioned that that passion, like you guys have all those culture pillars. You guys have this triangle of toughness and the the thing with the jersey numbers. Yo, what's been your reaction to just all the different stuff that Coach Trailers sort of brought in along those lines this year? One thing I can say is competition. When when he said that about the numbers and the single digit numbers, it's just competition rolls instantly, instantly, and it's just bringing a culture of love and you know we talk about integrity. That's true. Are you going to tell the truth to me over a long period of time? Passion, mental and physical toughness, that's, that's big. You know, we're going through a lot of things that mentally could distract us from our goal at hand. Physically tough, we're lifting every day. You know, selfishness, how are you going to help the next man get open? I know I want to be open on that post route, but how am I going to run this route to make sure the person outside of me gets the ball? You know, and perfect effort. That's something no one can coach. That's up to you. Are you going to go hard this play or are you not? And that's just the five things we're going to always think about. Going one and no every day, pounding the fist. And, you know, we try to win the day all the time. Every day we try to win. Is it difficult to get all the players to buy into that stuff or even just the idea of having to compete for jersey numbers? Or did you guys kind of take to it very quickly? I wouldn't say it's difficult to get them to buy in because if you want to buy in with something, you're going to. If it's something you truly feel 
you would like to be a part of, you're going to buy in. And I really think that's what this team is doing right now. And you talked a little bit about wearing number two. I know you were already doing that your first couple of years here. Does that number mean anything to you, or why is Definitely. number two the number you um, Two, one, and zero right now, it's an automatic target on your back. How are you going to represent, not just on the field? Are you going to class every day? Are you in your Zoom meeting class? Because we don't even really have a lot of classes in class right now. So it's just how are you going to really truly show what type of leader you are? But you were number two even before that plan, like going back to last year or two years ago. Is there a reason that's been your number? Um, I guess I got lucky to get number two when I first got here. And I was in 13 for the whole camp. So the number wasn't just given. It was, it was, it was truly earned. This is your guys' last week of practice before you get into kind of like a game week scenario and you're really into the season. How are you guys approaching this week any differently compared to the last couple, if at all? Well, you know, we, we're thinking about Texas State right now, but honestly, we're taking it day by day. I'm getting ready for tomorrow's practice and worry about the game plan we're instilling for tomorrow's practice, you know? Not trying to get too far ahead of ourselves, psych ourselves out or anything. We're just taking it day by day. When it comes, it's going to come. And when it gets here, we're going to be ready to play. All right, JJ, back to you. Stick, I know uh, your, your, your father's a police officer. And I guess from that perspective of having a father who's a police officer and all the social injustice, what, what have you shared with some of your teammates about, you know, both sides of the social injustice topic that's, that's been so big these last few months? You know, one thing we, we're really trying to talk about is just using our platforms, honestly, you know. Everything going on bad, all the bad things going on, we want to be the ones that's going to shed some light, the light in the dark room, the good against the evil, you can say. We're going to be on Twitter, Snapchat, just putting out great quotes and just trying to uplift people because it's, it's honestly a real tough time, and especially to be a college kid, you know. A lot of us are out of state, away from home, and we're COVID's going on. I wasn't even thinking of that. COVID's going on. We really have to band with each other, band with our brothers. We're in our own little bubble. We can't really hang with our other college friends. So we're really coming together strong and strong as a team just to put out great light into the world right now. Just trying to be an influence to do the right thing, speak on the right things as of right now. All right, Greg, back to you. Coach was telling us today, you know, you guys have been through 16 practices, which is kind of barely more than what a normal spring would be. And, and you know, in a different world, you guys would be getting ready to play a game this weekend. Do you, how, how ready do you feel like you would have been to play this weekend, like on a normal schedule, given that you're really kind of early in this process still? Can you, can you say it again? The, um, the mic's kind of low. Would you guys like for me to scoot up? Uh, no, I'll just try to talk louder for you. Sorry. Uh, I was just asking about you guys have really only been through 16 practices, which is kind of barely more than what a normal spring would be. I'm just wondering, like, how ready are you guys to play in a game if you had to play this weekend, which is how the schedule would have looked? Uh, the, I wouldn't say the schedule would change at all. Everything would be amplified because we all know instead of next Saturday, it's the Saturday coming up, and you're going to have to be – you're getting thrown into that fire even though we have – We've had that little bit of time. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to care if you go out there and play bad. If you go out there and play bad, it's, it's a problem. But if you go out there and win, they're not going to be like, dang, what if they would have had more time? They could have did this. They could have did that. No, it's right now we, we're going to grind. We're going to go over what we need to go over. And if we would have had to play this week, that's just what it would have been. But, shoot, I'm, I know one thing we're not going to do is complain about extra practices. Yeah, do you see the extra week as an advantage? How can you guys make use of that? Uh, you know, uh, Texas State plays SMU this this weekend, and that's definitely an advantage where we get to actually watch those guys and see what they're going to be doing against, not going to say against us, but how they're going to play, things like that. So you can't say it's an advantage. No one knows who we're going to do. Thanks, Sticks. Anything else for Sticks? All right, appreciate it. See you guys later.
Hey guys, uh, Jalen, Jalen can't make it over today. So I'm going to try and get him next week, either probably on Tuesday. Cause it might be that he has a conflict on Wednesdays after practice. So, um, sticks just tracked him down for me. So I don't think he can, he's not gonna be able to make it today, but, uh, we might try for him next Tuesday if that works. I right, no worries. And I'll, uh, I'll send every on Sunday. I'll send out the weekly schedule, but um, just so you know, there'll be a you know a roundtable at 9:30 Monday morning. That'll be via Zoom. Everything's via Zoom. Um, and then Tuesday, Wednesday after practice, and then um, after the game on Saturday, probably doing everything virtually there as well. Um, but I, I gotta kind of wait and see uh, what Texas State has set up wise for us to use. So, and then I'm gonna try and get the coordinators. Thursday after practice so solid solid all right good stuff I'll get that I'll get that kind of finalized later this week and then send it out on Sunday <clears throat> and maybe even Saturday if I have it together so all right all right Appreciate thanks Kyle. Th thanks for being patient no worries thanks Kyle. all right